Hello. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this webinar. As usual, we'll give a minute or two for people to join. It usually takes a couple of minutes for everyone to join us. Feel free to use the chat to say hello. I can see some familiar names. I can see some new names as well. So welcome, welcome everyone. Welcome to those who are coming back. Um, to another one of our webinars and welcome to everyone who uh, is here for the first time. Um, so the usual logistics for the for the next hour or so. Um, as usual for our webinars, we uh, we try to be flexible and um, we encourage you to take uh, to ask questions at any point during the webinar. We will be stopping. Um, every every few minutes to check whether there were any questions so we can uh, we can get to them as soon as possible so it's relevant um it is a, a technical webinar demo based so no slides as far as i uh, understand and that's usually how we do it so it's very hands on um hopefully it will be easy to follow we are also recording this so if you have to uh, go early or if you want to revisit this webinar you will be able to access the recording using the same link you've accessed uh, to to get on this live uh, broadcast right now uh, or the uh, using the registration link from your email address um if you if you want to share it or yeah or check it out later um and it will be available the recording will be available about an hour after we finish. So if you want to revisit, then it will be there. Um, you can use chat option for questions. You can use Q&A option for question uh, questions. It's up to you. We will be monitoring both. I will be monitoring both while Lukman will be uh, doing his demo. Um, and we hope to get to those um, as soon as possible. And we'll aim to answer them live as well, if possible. All right. OK, so. Yeah, we've got people from Croatia. Yeah, we've got um in the UK. We've got people in uh in the US. Great, it's as usual around the world, which is great to see. Okay, so I hope uh, you are in the right uh, place. So this is the webinar about um uh, from IDE to the cloud easy to carry deployments with Payara with Payara Cloud. Specifically, so uh, like I said, it is a, a demo based um, webinar, so I will stop sharing my screen now and I will, um, yeah, leave you with Lukman. So over to you, Lukman. Yes, thank you, uh, Dominica, and welcome everybody. So uh, as usual, I'll just go straight and share my screen and then we can start our discussion from there. So from IDE to the cloud. Now, uh, software development, as developers, we, we love to build things. And much more importantly, we love to see what we build running. And most of the time, nothing produces that dopamine uh, as seeing what you built running out there in the cloud. Uh, traditionally, Jakarta EE deployment has always been a bit of a uh, plumbing where you need to put a few things together. For instance, you need to download a binary uh, of, of an application server like Payara, and then provision that on some server out there, then push your binary to some remote repository and then pull it and deploy it there. Of course, you can always build pipelines with uh, containers like Docker or even Kubernetes and the, and, and the like, but these entail some kind of plumbing. Now, there are new paradigms in software development and uh, in, in application deployment, especially in the Jakarta EE world. And one of those is Payara Cloud. Now, in this very hands on quick uh, fire demo, we're going to see how you can get your code from your IDE right to the cloud without doing that intermediate plumbing. So let's start 
We are going to look at two sample uh, applications. Let's start with this one. This is a simple Jakarta EE uh, microservice that is a, a, a speaker a demo. So conference speaker and then sessions and talks. And if you've been to a conference or if you applied to a, 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 call, a, a conference before, you, you know the usual, there's a conference and then there are speakers with sessions and then you have a speaker can be part of a session and all of those. So it's a similar thing, this application uh, demos. Now, this here, we are not really going to go into the code as much as we want to see it running. So the first option to get this running, we're going to use GitHub Actions. Now, GitHub Actions, as you may know, uh, is a way to build pipelines on GitHub. So you create a repository and then build a pipeline uh, there with GitHub Actions. And then you push, tell GitHub Actions what to do when you push on which branch and that kind of thing. Now we're going to do something similar here. Now let's start by looking at our, our uh, definition here. This is our GitHub action definition. This is pretty much a, a vanilla moving GitHub action definition that has practically nothing you've never seen before if you've done GitHub or you've used GitHub actions uh, before. The only difference here is this, uh, these two steps here where we download something and then carry out some something here. Now, what we download is the command line interface to Pyra Cloud. It's essentially a utility, a JAR file, a, a, an executable JAR file that you can use to interact uh, in an automatic way in environments like uh, CI and CD, like GitHub Actions you use to interact with uh, Pyra Cloud. So here we download that. And then what we do here, we simply, run the command. Now, Paracloud, uh, the, the PCL, the, the command line interface, is a very straightforward uh, thing to use. It's, it's really nothing different from any other uh, command line interface you've used before. So as an example, you, you, you could do PCL dash dash help like this, and then get all the, the commands available and all that. Now, through the, the PCL, we, we can upload or we're going to upload our binaries to the Paracloud uh, environment. So now this is here, this is done, pretty simple, pretty vanilla, nothing, nothing out of the, the ordinary, simply download the Paracloud binary, we are passing the URL here, and then we are making sure we have uh, execution rights on the downloaded binary, and then nothing much, just here, upload. Now, what we are doing here is we are saying PCL-N. This N here stands for the namespace. So we are saying that here, upload these artifacts that we are defining here in the service uh, part here, services part here. Services refers to these services we have here. So we are saying for these services, upload each of them to this namespace. Now we are passing this A here stands for application. And then we are saying for each service, upload the binary, in this case, the WAR file to this particular application. So pretty much from code perspective, there's, there's nothing we need to do again. This is all we need to do in the code for us to be able to upload and optionally directly deploy to Paracloud. Now let's go, assuming we are starting from vanilla and uh, we need to do this, we need to first go to our Pyra Cloud environment. So here is my Pyra Cloud dashboard. Now there's, there's nothing overly complicated here. It's that simple. Let's create a namespace. Think of a namespace as a, a collection of applications and you can assign namespace to stages in your application. So let's call this namespace uh, live demo, live demo. And then let's say we are in dev stage. We are still in the development stage. So let's create our namespace here. Now with our namespace created, we are ready to deploy. The namespace, as you can see, has a URL. So all applications deployed to this namespace here are going to be accessible through this URL. So pretty much that's all there is. And so now that we have a name 
namespace. Let's copy this namespace here and then use that to configure our command line instruction here. So let's paste those here. So now we are saying that go in and then upload our applications or our binary files here to this namespace. So let's do this. Let's commit it status. Now let's commit it add. And then let's do this. All this uh, set new namespace space like this. And this is pretty much. So we just do a push to GitHub. So now this should be pushed to the remote repository. And then with this, we should expect that GitHub Actions should do the rest of the heavy lifting for us. So let's go to GitHub, GitHub, and then hopefully everything is working. Yeah, let's go to GitHub. Then uh, research repository, nope, this one, nope, uh, sorry, up here. Uh, conference demo, this one. And then go to actions. And then as you can see, set new namespace. So this is the recent commit or the, the commit I just did a few minutes ago, a few seconds ago, actually. And my pipeline has run. So if we inspect this, you can see there are four jobs for each of the services in here. One, two, three, four. There are four of them here run. So let's just pick one of them randomly, dashboard. And you can see it run. And then here, it did the download and then it simply uploaded to cloud for us. So let's go here, let's refresh this page. And then as you can see, we have four applications here. So this has just moved from GitHub Actions and the binaries are now uploaded to Paracloud. Now, we could also set our actions here to deploy directly. We could have just added dash dash deploy, and this would have deployed the application directly. So instead of uploading here and waiting, it could just deploy. But normally, I would prefer you upload and then wait. Sometimes you might need to do configuration. We'll see in, a, in, in, in an example in a bit where we need to do some kind of configuration and all that. So here our application is uploaded. We want to do some configurations. What kind of configurations do we need to do? So those are microservices and they, they talk to each other. Now, locally, when you are running, uh, obviously everything is local host 8080 or local host 5050. If we go to the code, we can see, let me open a session client like this. So if we come to the code, for instance, this is the micro, uh, micro profile REST client that is being used to access a resource in one of the microservices. So this is the vote module, this one, vote service or module, however you want to refer to it. Here, talking to or creating a REST client for a resource in another place, in this case here, it's creating a resource for session here. So your microservices will be talking to each other and you need a fine-grained way of abstracting the application from the, the URLs you use to talk to, the, the services we use to communicate with each other. Because if you are running locally, obviously everything is local host. Now, in some environment or in, in most cloud environments, when you upload, the depending on how the configuration is, the URLs might change. So you need to find a way of abstracting the application from the, the configuration for the various URLs. And this is exactly what we do with micro profile config. So if I open the micro profile config properties here, you can see for some of them, we have some properties here. So thus, we open the session. So if I open the session uh, config property here, you can see we have some properties here. These properties here refer to the base URL for micro profile clients. So if I open, this is from session. So if I open speaker, client, speaker, speaker, 
client, service client, yes, silver speaker. Clients, yes. If I open this, there is a URL set for this. If I go to dashboard here and I open the client, you can see there's a service client. So this here, this session service client here is a micro profile rest client. And this micro profile rest client here is targeting the session resource. Session service actually here. Nope, uh, session over here. Session, that's one API. Session resource, yes. It's targeting this session resource. So this session URL, uh, micro profile REST client down here is targeting this session resource here. And micro profile is going to create the implementations at runtime for us. So, so we are getting a free, uh, type safe Java client to be able to talk to the services. But again, at runtime, you need a way to uh, isolate the application from the configuration for the URL. And that is exactly what we did with the, the, the micro profile config here. So this here, as you can see, page.pyra.this is referring to some URL here. And the same thing is done for the session. So yeah, if I open the session, Client, yeah, nope, session, client, yes, says, yeah, speaker service clients, and then need to move this window from here, one second, yeah, close these here. Yes, so here, this session key here is being used in the micro profile config here to set this URL. So locally, I'm just saying that this is the URL for the, the speaker service, and this is the URL for the session service. Now, as we have uploaded to the cloud here, the URLs may not necessarily work. The local host may not necessarily work. So we need to configure them. So let's go here to the dashboard. Now, if I come to the code here, this is from the dashboard module or the dashboard service, depending on how you want to call your microservice. This is from the dashboard service. And this micro profile config property here is what we want to override or update, however you want to call it. So let's come back here and then go to dashboard. And for those properties, we want to configure them here in a different environment. So let's come to view configuration. Now, if I scroll down, you can see that automatically those configured properties are available here. So let me just uh, try and minimize the side by side and see if it works. Yes, this should work here. Close this. Yes. So this, oops, not working as I expected uh, back here. Yes, this is much more like, it's good. So these properties here, you can see speaker, API, blah, 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 is what we have here, we have the same thing here. So here, we can override these configuration properties here at runtime on the dashboard without touching our application. So whatever I change here, is going to, is what my application will pick at runtime running on Para Cloud, without me needing to redeploy the application or change anything here. So if I'm running locally, this should run fine for me. And then if I deploy to Para Cloud, then I can do this configuration here. So let's change this here. Now this here is referring to the speaker service. Now within Para Cloud, within a given namespace as we have it, the applications can speak with each. Other that are deployed applications within the namespace, same namespace as we have it here, can speak with each other through their names. So we can simply say, as this is the speaker, we can say speaker forward slash speaker like this. And so this now will refer to the speaker service. Now over here we have session, so we can do the same. We can say session, session like this, session forward slash session. Now the application context path is session, 
And then here is the application name within ParaCloud. So locally, you say localhost. Within ParaCloud, you simply use the application name, and then your applications should talk to each other. So we have this, we are overriding this here. We are overriding the speaker here as well. And then there is venue. So for venue, we also need to override. Let's just confirm here. Venue here is referring to the same uh, speaker. So we just use the same one we use for speaker. So we can copy this and simply paste this here. And that is it. So we've configured the application. Now, and this is why I was saying that ideally you want to upload and then go through and be sure that there is no configuration uh, missing or something because most of the time you need to do some kind of configurations before you can deploy the application. So this is a typical example. Now with our configuration done, we are ready to deploy. So let me just uh, deploy the changes here. So application is deployed. Let me deploy the other services as well. These ones, let's just confirm, we don't need to make any changes here. As you can see, there is no need to make any, okay, there is something we need to change uh, here. This is referring to the speaker service. So we can do the same as we did at the other place. You can say speaker like this, the same. And this is referring to uh, venue uh, session here. And so we can do the same, we can paste the same uh, here, and then yeah, we should be good. So let's save this, and then we can deploy this. And this is deployed, so let's go to speaker. Let's confirm there's any configuration we need to do. There's no configuration here. So let's go back and simply deploy. Deploy. And this is deployed soon. Last one. Let's deploy this and deploy. While this is deploying, we can simply go back here and check our dashboard. You can see all the applications are by default deployed to the context path, same as application name. So here we can just click this. And then done. So this is working. Now let's go back and confirm this guy is also deployed. So this one is still deploying for a bit, no problem. But here now, this is deployed here. Now let's go back and recap what we've done so far. We have pushed our service to GitHub and then used GitHub Actions to simply upload our application binaries to ParaCloud. Now, of course, uh, on, on GitHub Actions, you might have some intermediary steps. You can have tests. You can have so many things in the middle and all that. And uploading is one of those. So here we have this. Now you could also have another step here that would deploy the applications. You can deploy through Para uh, command line interface as well. It, the, 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 the combination of things you can do in the GitHub actions is almost infinite. But at the bare bones, this is how you can do it. So take this, you just push it to your GitHub repo and then simply upload it to ParaCloud. So practically, this has moved from our IDE to GitHub and then straight to the, the, the cloud. Now let's come back here and check this. Let's take this for a spin. So this is our speaker. Let's come here, call him, uh, name, put my name here, Sam from Fire, and save. Okay, uh, seems one service is not up. So as we are saving and it's not saving, let's come back here 
and check our configuration. Most of the time, if you save and it says 404, probably means your service is not able to find the other service and talk to it. So we just need to come in here and check what we are missing. So here we have venue API. Let's go back to our code and check our config properties here. Uh, venue API is referring to the same endpoint as the speaker. So this is correct. Session is referring to the session endpoint. So session here is referring to session. And then this, again, let's confirm here if the, the endpoints are correct. So here, as you can see, I call it session, but it is deployed to microservice session. Now, this name is taken from what we call the, the, the binary that was uploaded. If you come to here, for instance, speaker, uh, nope, this is built, yeah, good. So if you come here, this UI is picked like that dashboard and then session uh, speaker. Let me just do here. Maybe clean, clean package. Oops. Maybe clean package. Let me just skip test. Skip, clean, skip test here. So what Pyra Cloud does is that it can, it names it, it names the deployed uh, context path based on a number of factors. So the name could be from the, the uploaded artifact, or it could be uh, identified from the file name or any other factors. Now we can also override the context path here. So if, if you come here, edit, we want session to be available at session here. Session to be available at session, but we now it is at microservice session. So we can simply copy this here. You can change this and then redeploy, or we can just go back to our dashboard and then reconfigure our application again. And then tell the runtime that this guy, session can be found here. Session and then speaker can also be found at speaker like this. And we come here, session. So we have session, another speaker. Yes, the so speaker here again. So microservice speaker, microservice speaker, save. Good. Now, as you can see, now it says configured, meaning that there is a new uh, version of the deployed artifact here that has been configured. So let's deploy our change. Let's come down here and deploy our change. Well, this is deploying, so this is done actually. So come here and then inspect, inspect the other configurations as well. So this here should also be a service speaker, a service speaker, save this, and then go back and deploy. Okay, so this is deployed. Now let's go to speaker and confirm there's anything we need to do here. So there's nothing we need to do here. So let's go back, let's refresh this guy. Let's go home, refresh to be sure. And then go to speakers, new, let's say, fire, and then save. So this is saved now. Let's go to edit, should be able to, okay, yeah, of course, I didn't implement that. Let's go to sessions. Let's create a session. Let's call it Jakarta EE for beginners. Uh, let's take a venue. Let's just pick a random date here. And then let's associate speakers with the session and save this. And this is done. So our application is now deployed and it's running directly from our IDE to GitHub to uh, the, the Para Cloud.
Now, this is all done in, in a very straightforward way. There's, there's really nothing uh, obscure here. All you need to do is define your GitHub actions and then the para cloud uh, command line interface. Now, of course, as you can see, you might have observed that there is a secret here. This here is defined in the secret of the GitHub uh, actions here. If I come to settings, and then I go to actions and secrets, you can see I'm defining the key, the, the, the token, the access token here. You need to define an access token for Pyra Cloud to be able to work. In, in, in an automated uh, environment, like in the CI environments, like we have it here, Pyra Cloud will look for this. Now, if you come to the here, you can see it's using PCL underscore off underscore token, and we are using, we are passing that to this particular uh, parameter or, or configuration value here from the GitHub uh, action secret here. So we are simply grabbing that and setting it. Now you might be wondering, how do you log in? It's quite simple. If you have an account, all you need to do is to say PCL log in, and then you can do dash dash screen, screen token. Now this here is going to open a window for you to log in. And then it's going to print a token and you just store that token in your environment variable. And then you should be good because Pyra Cloud will always search for a defined variable in the environment it is executing in with this name, PCL underscore off underscore token. Do you have any questions so far, Dominica? No, no questions. We can carry on. Nice. Yeah. So Pyra Cloud will look for PCL underscore off underscore token to do its work. Now, this is one way you can do it. This way, we are using GitHub Actions. Now, you could extrapolate the same process to use for other environments, other deployment pipelines like Jenkins or Bitbucket pipelines or uh, GitLab pipelines or any other uh, automated deployment uh, pipeline. You can just extrapolate. It should be the same process like that. The most important thing is to have the auth token in the environment. Now, this is one way of doing it. Now, let's look at the next way of doing it. Let me bring this uh, project here. The other way is to simply bundle the, the whole setup as part of our Maven build project. So I have another project here. And this time around, we are using the Maven exec plugin to simply, let me just remove this. I'm not using that. We are using the Maven exec plugin to upload to ParaCloud. So if I come here, this is the Maven exec plugin, and then we are defining an execution. The execution is quite simple. We are using the ParaCloud uh, command line interface. This is added to our build. So this is available as part of our bundled uh, libraries. You, you can have different ways of doing it. You can, you can put this somewhere that you can reference in this particular uh, execution. It could be on your local machine. It could be anywhere. In this example, I am just bundling it as part of the application uh, build artifact. So we just reference the ParaCloud binary and then we pass in some arguments. Now, these arguments are pretty much the same as we've seen so far for the other one is dash n referring to the namespace. So this namespace, we created another one. Let's go and copy our namespace here. This namespace is live demo. So we just copy this live demo and come here and put this in here. Paste this here. And then we are saying upload. And then the name of the application is this. And then here we are referring to the binary file. So it's pretty much the same command that we saw in the GitHub Actions uh, definition. But this time around, we are using the Maven, execute, uh, Maven exec plugin to do that. So let's execute this. Now we need to have the war file built for this to work. So let's just do the whole uh, thing in one go. 
Let me do uh, minimum in package dash p dash p. Skip test and then exec like this. Can do this. So here I am I am calling the exec plugin to do its job, carry out this task for me. So let's run this. Let's repackage my application and then upload those two para the binary to para cloud. So if I come here, you can see I have four applications here. Now, if everything goes according to plan, I should come back and then have five applications. So let's wait for those two to be done. So you can see this is now sitting here. It's waiting, depending on the speed of the internet, this should take between a few seconds to a few minutes here and there, depends on the, the, the speed of the internet and the latency and all that. So this will take quite some time. But then let's go back to the console. As you can see, one of my deployments failed. So you will also have these kind of problems. So the deployment has failed. If you come here, deployment failed. Most of the time, you want to find out what is going on or what could have failed. So let's check. First of all, did we miss a configuration? Everything here. So here, there is a configuration here that we missed. So let's edit our configuration. So those here, they're referring to session clients. Let's come here to, and then change this here. So we you can say session, and then this becomes micro, micro service session. Save this, and then redeploy this. In the meanwhile, let's go back, and this has uploaded. So as you can see, our application is now uploaded to Paracloud. We got something here this is similar to what we had in github actions so if i go back to github actions and i open this show the jobs one of these upload to deploy to cloud so you can see we have the same output here so now let's go back here so you can see our boot is also running now. It's deployed and it's running just fine. So now let's go back to our namespace. And then you can see we have another application here. So this is the, this has been uploaded and it's waiting for us to do some configuration. Now, this particular application does require configuration because there is something in there that is not passed as part of the application. Let's come here. And then say edit configuration. Yeah, these are all the configurations defined here. But if I come to the application and I go to this particular controller class here, you can see there's a micro profile config property here. It says config property open API key. Now, this key here is not passed as part of the application. Yeah, it's, it's not passed in here because it's, it's, a, it's an access key, and anybody who has access to that will have access to whatever service the key is authenticating to. You really don't want that. You could include it here and also uh, check it into version control. And if your repository is public, you have immediately checked in an access key. And this has actually happened in the real world where uh, access keys have been accidentally checked in, and that has become uh, quite some security issues out there. So what we are doing here is taking this, but not passing it as part of the application. So the expectation is that this is available within the environment that the application is running. So let's go to our cloud environment and set a new configuration key. Put this in here, add property. And then here, now we need to pass the key. So let me just copy this key off camera, copy, and then paste this here. And so paste this and then save. So now we have configured this. So let's run this.
Okay, so this is also deployed now. Let's wait for a few seconds and then we should be able to access this here. So this is also deployed and this is ready to be used. So from here, we did our configuration, blah, 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 and then deployed and the deployment is working. So we moved directly from packaging our application and simply pushing it to ParaCloud directly without any intermediate. This time around, we didn't go through GitHub actions or anything. We just pushed this. And as you can see, you can always configure your application. Now you could also directly deploy. You could directly deploy, but as you have seen, most of the time you might have a few configurations that you need to do to the application before it can be deployed. And so this is how you do it. So ParaCloud takes your application and then can deploy it or gives you or just holds it and tells you that if you have any uh, uh, configuration edit, you can come and do it once you're ready, you just deploy. And as you can see, it's quite fast, almost magical. And this is running. And this is pure Jakarta EE running out there. There's, there's really nothing much I did other than push and then have it running. So if, I, if we come to the configurations again, you can see this application is a Jakarta EE 10 running on JDK 17 at the moment. So this is... Jakarta EE deployed to the cloud and run it. And this is our application. There are different uh, components of this here and here. These are all running on Jakarta EE. This is a, a vanilla Jakarta EE application with Biden. And that's, we just pushed from our IDE directly to Pyra Cloud. Any questions so far, Dominica? No, we're good. Okay, great. So let's recap what we've done so far. So far, we've seen two separate ways of pushing from our IDE and getting our application directly to ParaCloud. The first one is that you can use GitHub Actions. So you define your actions and then use the ParaCloud uh, command line interface to simply upload your binary. Now, again, you need to define your access token as part of the GitHub secret and then reference that. So let's go back here just for refreshing. We come here. We need to define the access token that we can use to access Para uh, Cloud in your GitHub action. So PCL auth token here, you define this and then you use this. Or you can also bundle it as part of your build process. So in this case, you can have as complex a build process as you can this is uh, this is a bare bones simple way you can go about it but you can build this and so you can put this as part of your execution phase or however you configure your project and then once your artifact is built and tests are passed and some conditions are met we can simply then automatically upload it to Pyra cloud so pretty much this is how you can move from your ide to the cloud without breaking a sweat using ParaCloud. And this is Jakarta EE. This is, or you might call it Java EE, in the cloud, native and straight to the point. So you can give this a trial today. Just go and take ParaCloud for a spin, give it a trial, and then see for yourself. This sample code will also be available for you to pull and then see how it's done. In the absence of any question, let me hand over to you again, Dominica. Since it's so simple, there's really not much to talk about. Just upload your binary and then it's done. And it's the same thing. Just use the command line interface, either as part of your GitHub actions or your moving build process, upload to cloud and then deploy. Thank you. Thanks. Over to you, Dominica. Thank you. Yeah, and I think I think that's the whole point to show the simplicity of the whole process. And um, yeah, the less we talk about, the better, really, because that that just means it's it's so easy. So yeah, I posted in the chat. I posted the link to Pyro Cloud Trial if uh, you want to uh, yeah take it for a spin yourself, uh, give it a go. Um, you can do um, 
something similar to Lookman, you can you can just try it out. So it's available for a 15 days trial uh, completely free um, via that link. So I definitely encourage you to do that. Um, and yeah, and I think, yeah, in the absence of any questions, um, I think we are um, good to finish um, with 15 minutes to spare, which is great. So like I said, again, this is uh, recorded. So if you want to revisit, then please come back to the link uh, within the next half an hour. It should be available for you. And um, also, I wanted to invite you all to the Payara virtual conference, uh, which is happening in almost exactly uh, a month. So uh, some of you might have already um, received the invite and uh, already registered, but I'm posting the link to the chat again. This is a conference where we'll be focusing on Jakarta EE and Jakarta EE Future. It's a completely free event, so uh, you can join, uh, you can register now, you can um, attend the live sessions, or you can watch them on demand, so it's completely up to you. So I definitely encourage you to um, have a look and register. I think Lukman uh, <laughs> dropped off, um, which actually happened in our tech uh, check session. There he is back, just for a for a goodbye. <laughs> it's good. This was a good timing to drop uh, drop out, Lukman. That's that's not too bad. So Zoom was nice to um, to give you give you this time to actually do the demo. Okay. So I think we're good. Uh, I think we're done for today. Thank you very much again. Keep an eye on our uh, blog, Payara, uh, blog.payara.fish for other events. Uh, we will be running another webinar probably by the end of this month as well. So we'll announce it on there. And yeah, definitely have a look at Payara Cloud. Uh, give it uh, a go through the uh, free trial and please register to the virtual pair conference. All right. Thank you very much. Have a good rest of your day. Good uh, evening, wherever you are in the world. And see you next time. Bye-bye. Yeah, right.